Only for the word of God, without which we recognize we will perish. So open us, open our ears now to hear your word. And open our ears to hear your word broken, open and preached to us. For we long to be nourished with the word of God. Jesus, you are the word made flesh. We praise you and thank you for your presence in our midst today. We are your body, the body of Christ. We want to grow into greater maturity and depth in you. Bless us now as we hear from you. Amen. so pleased to read Psalm 100 because it's a lovely one. Psalm 100, a psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Frida. My African brothers and sisters call me Lade. I've got two names because I've got both heritage. I'm English and I'm Nigerian. And that is a blessing. Amen. Um, there'll be a lot of amens and hallelujahs. Please bear with me. I love this church. It's very homely, very cozy. Thank you for welcoming us. The Lord is with you. Amen. This morning, I'm grateful to God that he created us in his own image. That we should reflect and give him glory in all that we do. And I'm honored this morning to share the word of the Lord. I don't feel qualified, but I thank the Holy Spirit that he makes the foolish things of this world and he uses them to confound the wise. That is what the Bible says. So before I begin this morning, I want to read to you a prayer that I wrote um, in my book. Please forgive me. I'm not plugging. It's the first time I've taken it out anywhere. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning that I want you to read this prayer to the church. So I'm going to read this prayer over you, and it's titled, May God Daily Load You with Benefits and Turn Your Disappointments into Joy. God's goal for our lives is to have joy and have it even more abundantly. The Bible says that I wish that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God is the God of the overflow. Amen. Today, I pray that your soul will silently wait for God. He is the only one who has the answer to our problems. Perhaps there are questions you want answered, and you're looking for satisfaction for your soul. I pray that you will patiently and silently wait upon the Lord for an answer from him. When you wait on the Lord, you will find comfort for your soul. I pray that God will be your comforter today and every day. I pray that you will cheerfully give all your affairs to his will and his wisdom. He alone is our rock and our salvation. I pray that the Lord will be your defense, your deliverer, your shield and buckler. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, May he surround you forever. 
If you're worried about your job or anything for that matter, I pray that you will not be greatly moved. I pray that you will wait on God alone and not put your trust in man, for surely the arm of flesh will fail. I pray that God will turn every disappointment around for your good and that you will not cast away your confidence. Though you may feel disappointed by friends and family and your relationships may not work out as desired, I pray that you will find refuge in God and that you will not be moved. I pray that God will daily load you with benefits and turn your disappointments into joy. May God be your salvation and the rock of your strength. I pray that God will intervene in your case and make all things work together for your good. If you're in pain or have been hurt by loved ones, colleagues, or friends, I pray that God will bring healing to your soul and set you free from the pain you may be going through. I pray that you will forgive and release those who have hurt you so that your blessings will not be delayed. The Bible says in Psalm 62, 9, 10, men of low degree are a vapor, and men of high degree are a lie. If they're weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Verse 10, do not set your heart on them. God will render to each man according to their works. So do not put your trust in man. Only let your soul silently wait for God alone. He alone is able to deliver. It is God that brings out those who are bound into prosperity. I pray that God will bring you into prosperity. I pray that he will give you peace and send you abundance of rain from his goodness. I pray that God will daily load you with benefits and that your land will produce. He will turn your disappointments into joy, and your joy will be full. May your relationships be restored, and all that you prosper now, and all that you do prosper now and always. God bless you abundantly now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Every day that God has made it's a day that is worth for us to give thanks. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's not every time that we want to rejoice or we feel like rejoicing. It's not every time that we're glad in it. I can tell you that because I have been through. But there is a reason to rejoice because God says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even if you go through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the fire, I will be with you. God never leaves his own. Hallelujah. And there we have the confidence that he's with us always, even until the end of the age. We have every reason to rejoice. We may not have all that we want. We may not have achieved all the goals that we've written down. But there is one greater than every goal. His name is Jesus. He died for you and for me. He went down to the pits of hell and took the governance away from the hands of the enemy and gave us abundant life. We're thanking God for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the blood on the, on the cross at Calvary. That cross has done everything. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. It is finished with your problems. When you bring it to the place of the cross, it is finished. It is finished with your pain. When you bring it to the place of the cross, we've just sang that song. Take it to the Lord in prayer. If you feel forsaken by friends, take it to the Lord in prayer. Everything that troubles my soul, I have found a friend in Jesus. And I know where to run to and who to run to. And so I go to our Father who art in heaven and I give him hallowed and hallow his name. Because his kingdom will come. Whether we believe it or not, whether we know it or not, his kingdom will know no end. Because he's died and risen. Hallelujah. 
So I want to re read in verse 100. Pastor, I thank you for giving us the opportunity this morning. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 100. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Make a joyful shout. Our culture may not actually, it may not be comfortable in our culture to shout. But it is liberating when you make a joyful shout. I remember when I walked into Victory Church, Hampstead, in 1988, and I thought the people were crazy. Because I walked in there and they were full of life. They praised and they worshipped and they jumped and they clapped. And I thought, no, I think they need prayers. <laughs> Little did I know that I needed prayers. I was not comfortable. But the Lord, the Spirit of God was alive and I felt it. I couldn't deny it. And I went home. I said, Lord, I, it's uncomfortable for me, but I'm hungry for what you've got to give me. Be hungry for God and all of what he's got to give you. Don't limit him and put him in a box. Even the world loves people who can think out of the box. We mustn't limit the spirit of God. Otherwise, we will not experience the fullness of his glory. You've been called and you've been chosen. It's a reason to give thanks. You may not think so. The Lord was speaking to me this morning before I came here. He said, speak to my children. He said, some of you have been abused from even when you were a child. Perhaps your mother never gave you a hug or your dad. Or dad or mom left home. He said, but I'm your father now. You're in a new family now. You have every reason to give thanks. You have every reason to rejoice. Even though you were cast away, I welcomed you home. The Bible says, even though my mother and my father may forsake me, the Lord will bring me out. And the Lord is bringing us out. No matter what the pain of the past, God says, I know how you feel, but I want to heal you and set you free. So you are not, you're not bound in the past. So you can press on forward to the mark of your calling in Christ Jesus. You've been called. You've been chosen. You've been appointed. When God spoke to me that he was going to use me, I said, Lord, I can't do it. Number one, I don't like crowds. Number two, I don't like noise. Number three, I just can't do it. He said, I will help you. I said, choose someone else. Choose an orator. Choose somebody whose gift is to speak. But God said, no, it is you that I have chosen. When God chooses you, can the clay say to the potter, do not mold me this way or mold me that way? God is a potter and we are the clay. We can say to the master, do it this way or do it that way. He chooses to use you how he chooses. So I want to give thanks this morning that he created you, appointed you, anointed you, and sent you into this world to come and make a difference. And a difference you will make. You may not be the prime minister of Great Britain, but you can make a difference in your community. You can make a difference in your family. You can make a difference with your neighbors. You are the light of the world. You are the one that Christ is shining on. You are the one that he died for. You are the one that because of love, he went all the way. And he'll do anything for you, just that one person. He said, I will leave the 99 and go for the one that is lost. I want to tell you this morning that you are special in the sight of God. He loves you with an everlasting love. He is fighting for your life. Jesus will not give up on you, so don't give up on yourself. I was never confident, but when I came to the Lord, he restored my confidence and gave me hope and told me who I am in Christ Jesus. And when I discovered who I was, who I am in Christ Jesus, 
I began to stand and to decree that I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So the Bible says it's not by our might, nor by our power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. There's nothing that we can do without the help of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is standing here this morning, applauding you for taking the step to say, I will go into the house of the Lord. God loves you this morning. I can feel a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit. I want you to just receive him and take him in as a companion. He is a helper. When Jesus was going into glory, he said, I will pray to my Father to send you a comforter who is the Holy Spirit. He will help us. He will be our guide and he will bring everything to our remembrance. Still today, I say to the Lord when he opens the door for me to speak, I say, Lord, I don't think I can do it. And he says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It is no longer you that live, but Christ that lives in you. And the Lord said that we must not criticize one another. We must not judge our brother and our sister because our thanksgiving then will not be accepted. God is the only judge and he remains so forever. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. There is no sorrow in God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Some people will come here, they clap their hands, it's all right. Some people come here, and all they can do, they're jumping in their hearts, but they don't know how to express themselves. That's all right. Some people are here, they're just tapping their feet. That's all right. God is everything. He can dance. He can sing. He can shout. And he can be silent. He can be quiet. He's everything. The reverend said, you know, he talked about the beauty of all the colors. It is a beautiful thing to see all colors worshiping the Lord our God together in unity. The Bible says, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there the Lord pours out his blessings. It is in unity that God pours out his blessings. There is not one higher than the other in the sight of our Father. We're all equal in his sight. And so we will serve the Lord with gladness. The Bible says, come before his presence with singing. We've been singing this morning. Know that the Lord, he is God. We're all gathered here together this morning with one vision to come and worship the Lord our God. The Bible has many names for God. His name is Yahweh the Almighty. His name is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. His name is Jehovah Shammah, the one who is always present. Our God is a good God. There is no shadow of doubt in him. The Bible says in verse 3, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. I have every reason to give thanks to God, though the enemy may come and say negative things to you. We have every reason to give thanks to God. Please do not look at yourself in the mirror and see ugliness because you've been created in the image of our Father who is in heaven. The Bible says it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. He chose to make me brown and beautiful. He chose to make you white and beautiful. He chose to make and create the Chinese. He chose the Japanese. He's chosen all of his children. And he's made them in his own image the way that he wants. Can you imagine in your garden if you just had one flower in there? All of them, the whole of your garden, just one. 
one species. But when your garden is colorful, people are attracted to it. They come and they take pictures of this wonderful garden that the Lord has created. We are the garden of the Lord. It's very colorful. God is not boring at all. He's not silent at all. When God began to speak to me and he gave me this gift to hear him, I said, Lord, you can speak. I thought you couldn't speak. And I would walk into the bathroom or the toilet and the Lord would be speaking to me. I said, Lord, we're in the toilet now. <laughs> it's as if I just want to, shh. And the Lord said, no, I'm not limited by buildings. I'm not limited by time. I am the God of time and eternity. Everything that I do, nothing limits me. I am the God of the overflow. The God of the overflow is in you. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The one that is in the world is negative. He will tell you you're not capable. He will tell you you're ugly. He will tell you you can't do it. He will tell you to hate that person and not forgive. But God says you are beautiful. And you are able to forgive and let go. And if you find it difficult, I will help you. All you need to do is come to me. The Bible says, come unto me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. In him you will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. There is something about thanksgiving. When you're giving gratitude to God, it leads you even further into a heart of worship. I find that when I'm thanking God, I feel more favor come to me. When you thank God, it opens doors for you that you cannot imagine. Every lack God can provide for, when you give him thanks in spite of it, it's easy to give thanks when things are good, but it's not easy to give thanks when things are not so good. But the Lord says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, when you begin to praise the Lord in the midst of your circumstances, the shackles will begin to break. What you're doing there is you're disarming the enemy. All those chains of pain and hurt will be broken. As Paul and Silas praise the Lord in prison, the prison doors were opened. Praise unlocks the chain of the devil. And I can tell you that you are an arrow in the hands of God. He will use you. And he will use you for signs and wonders. You've been created for such a time as this. You know, I stood here, even when I s sat there, I saw the gentleman sitting here. You know, in, in Nigeria, we will say, I saw our father sitting here because he's an elder. And the Lord said to me, my favor is upon him. Amen. I love him. I love him. God loves you, sir. He cares about you. Oh, he cares about you. And for many more too. Aren't you beautiful? You know when you have a little baby? No matter how ugly. No matter how, how not so great. You know, because when babies are born, they're so wrinkled, you know. They, they, but you know what? We look at them and say, oh, they're really beautiful. Look at how beautiful. You know, God does not see ugliness. He can't see the wrinkles that you see. He can't see the ugliness that you see. He can't see the lack. And the negativity, all he sees is how beautiful you are. And he wants you to see yourself that way. If my son should come to me and say, Mom, I don't feel beautiful. He's never done it, but should he do it? I will put him right that you are beautiful. My mother used to say something to us when we were little, when I was in secondary school. Because I was really short. I was shorter than my peers. And they used to call me short woman devil. I didn't do anything evil. It's just a name that they would just call me just to hurt you. You know what school is like. Children can be quite uh, spiteful. And I would go home deflated and tell my mom. They call me short woman devil. 
And my mom would sit me down and say, you're beautiful. None of my children are ugly. I didn't know what that would do to me in later years. She, when she says it, I just wipe my tears and I'm all right. I'm all right after that. It's like healing just took place. But as I grew up, I began to value the worth of a mother that prophesies and speaks life unto their children and not see the negativity in the children because the children are our future. And so if we cannot give thanks for our children, who are we going to give thanks for? They're the rulers of our nat nation tomorrow. So if negative seeds are being planted in them, they will turn out negative. But God cares about the little children. He cares about the teenagers. Some teenagers are bored. They're looking for company. And God wants us to spend time with our family and with our children. He wants us to give thanks for them. They may be a little bit troublesome, but he will help us to raise them in the right way. The Bible says, train a child the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. My nan used to tell me that. And I used to think, oh, they're strict. My dad was so boring when he got born again. I wasn't born again, and none of our families knew Christ. We were, we, we were raised as Methodists. And my dad would read the Bible, and he would go to church and all these things, and I used to think, boring, boring, boring. Little did I know that the foundation for the future was being laid. Whatever you do, pray to God for your children. Thank him for their lives. Thank him that he brought them into your lives. They may not be perfect, but keep thanking God, and they will come out trumps in Jesus' name. Verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. The Lord is good. I remember when my father died. I had the opportunity to question him. My dad was 65 years old. He had a tooth problem. But because of the fear of the dentist, he just would not go. And the tooth decayed and decayed until it went into the bone. And when he got to the dentist, they said, we've got to operate. This was in Nigeria. And he went to the operating table. I can tell you that he never came back. He died on the dentist table. And I wept my eyes out. I cried to God. I said, God, don't you ever talk to me again. Don't whisper in my ears. I don't want to hear it. And I just blocked off. But the love of God kept drawing me. And I came back. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. It's because I'm really hurt. I want you to heal me. I'd be driving around in London, and I just didn't know where I was going. I'd just be driving in tears. This is what prompted me to write this book. Have you been depressed? Have you been anxious? God is there for all of us. I've seen trials and tribulations, but God was there through it all. He said, I am there. Your father worshipped me. He loved me. He said, your father is in glory. He's looking down on you, saying, my daughter, run the race. Run the race. Run the race. And be like Paul at the end of your day, who will say, I have run the good race. I have fought the good fight. The laser crown ahead of all of us. Whatever you can do to bring about change in your sphere of influence, do it. If you're in your office and it's oppressive, go home and pray. Take it to the Lord in prayer. That was the song that we sang. Let's not just sing, but let it come to life in us. Let it breathe in us. Whatever the problem in the office, whatever the problem in the marriage, whatever the problem with the children, Whatever the problem with a single motherhood or divorce, God loves you just the way you are. Give thanks because you're still alive, you're not dead. You are worth, the Bible says, much more than many sparrows. If God can watch over the birds of the air, who, when they're hungry, do not even ask, it's provided for them, how much more you? The Bible says you are worth much more than many sparrows. So let us give God thanks this morning. We're thanking God for Sister Betty. It's my husband's birthday as well. It's your birthday as well. And it's a joyful day. It's a day to rejoice. You know, it's a, joy, it's a day to give thanks. And we just uh, bless the Lord this morning. So uh, may I pray?
in ending. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. We give you all the praise and all the glory that is due to you. We could not have died and gone to the grave. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for his brother. Jesus laid down his life for us. For that reason, we're thanking you. We're thanking you for the blood of Jesus that is speaking greater things than the blood of Abel. We're thanking you, Father God, for where you brought us from. You took our feet from the mary clay and you set it on the solid rock of our salvation. His name is Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you that if it had just been one alone, you would still have died. Thank you for creating us in your own image and loving us so that you did not leave us comfortless. You did not leave us hopeless. You gave us a hope. You sent us the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray this week, as we all go into our different homes, that your Holy Spirit will abide with us, that your Holy Spirit will guide us, and that the healing process for those of us who need you to heal us and set us free will begin to take place. Help us to love one another, even as Christ has loved the church. Help us to appreciate one another and to see with the eyes of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you so much for that inspiring word of encouragement. I shall never look in the mirror the same way again. <laughs> now, um, it's actually a command, this, you know, it's a command. If you have a look at it, it says, shout. It doesn't say, would you like to shout? <laughs> uh, it says, shout to jo for joy. And I find it quite difficult to shout <clears throat> because of my background. I used to enjoy shouting for a clarinet, but I find it actually quite difficult to shout. So why don't we all stand now, and, and I'm going to say, shout the words of this psalm, this wonderful Psalm 100. Thank you for breaking it open for us. And I, if you'd like to respond very quietly uh, after me, do. But if you feel like shouting, then shout. So we're all going to stand now. <clears throat> don't be shy. Just be yourself. <clears throat> this is Psalm 100, and I'm reading from the New International Version, right? So say the words after me that I've, I say to you. <clears throat> Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. <clears throat> it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Right. Sit down. Yeah. Um. I'm just watching my cue here. Um, um, Betty explained to me that in Nigerian, not Uganda, in Nigerian tradition, um, at such a birthday celebration act of worship as this, 
the whole congregation is invited to make a gift not to Betty and her family, but to the Lord God Almighty and the work of the church that is hosting the event, Christ Church Bushmead. This is extraordinarily good news for us, we pray. <laughs> this is likely to send our treasurer and his team skipping all the way down the road. So anyway, um, we're going to take up this offering now. I'm not sure how this is done, Betty, in uh, Nigerian tradition, but you can come and explain to us now, would you? Good morning, church. And to those from my friends because of background, <laughs> praise God. God is good. And all the time, amen. Okay, um, I think some of you might be wondering, what is she doing? Um, as I kind of explained to Martin and some, of, some people that I've spoken to, I feel this is what the Lord said I should do. And it's a command. And um, for me, when it says that if one person is mourning, you mourn with them. If one is celebrating, you celebrate with them. So that's why I'm inviting the whole church. When I dance in, even if you don't want to get up, put something in the, um, the plate that we bring in so we can all say thank you to God together. If you have nothing to thank him for, please do it for me because he has been wonderful in my life. He's done a lot for me. And I will speak about that you know, later again. I would give you a little bit of testimony, but for now, let's thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> 